Hello everyone. If you're a fan of SCP Explained, you'll know that we regularly post interesting questions in our community tab, asking for responses from you, our dear fans. These have ranged from questions about specific anomalies like SCP-096, or your suggestions on how we should actually kill SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile. We've even asked you which anomalous powers you'd want to have and posed your questions directly to SCP-343, also known as God, and of course, the terrifying and infamous Scarlet King. But in our latest community question, asking you about hypothetical crossovers between the SCP Foundation and the weird wild multiverse of all fiction, you truly outdid yourself with thousands upon thousands of responses. And we thought rather than just making one video selecting our favorites, we'd turn each of our favorites into whole videos. And how are we going to do that? That's where this wonderful state-of-the-art gizmo comes into play. You may remember the Anomatron 6000, our incredibly advanced artificial intelligence-driven supercomputer designed specifically to run simulations for the SCP Foundation. We fed this computer data from countless SCP Foundation experiments and cross-tests, and all the data from your suggestions. This will allow the fine folks at the SCP Foundation to explore any anomalous hypothetical without risking the lives of staff members or civilians. This brings us to our first simulation, suggested in a huge number of comments. Could SCP-682 be contained within the backrooms? For those not in the know, the Backrooms is an internet urban legend that spiraled into a full-blown phenomenon. It's built on the premise that if you're not careful and enter certain specific circumstances, you can no-clip out of our reality and enter a terrifying multi-level alternate reality, where you're stalked by a variety of bizarre and frightening creatures. This could be a complete nightmare for your average person, but how would it play out if SCP-682 the endlessly angry, hard-to-destroy reptile found its way inside. Also, for another Backrooms-related surprise, stick around until the end of the video. In the meantime, though, let's boot up the Anomatron and test this new scenario. The worst had happened again. SCP-682 had busted out of containment during a cross-test and started making a beeline for the nearest populated area. Several helicopters containing heavily armed MTF Nu-7 Hammerdown members were in hot pursuit, attempting to slow the vicious reptile down with targeted sniper fire at its legs. But it seems that these efforts were all for naught. SCP-682 had already reached the defunct industrial district on the edge of a nearby city, and if the beast managed to actually reach a populated area, all hell would break loose. That's when they pulled out the heavy weaponry. Miniguns mounted to the helicopters unleashed a rain of hellfire down onto SCP-682. However, 682 managed to dodge most of the bullets and simply tank the rest. Command authorized the use of heavy ordnance, the helicopter's missile launchers. They'd pick up the pieces afterwards, once SCP-682 was back in containment. However, the reptile had plans of its own. It charged into a nearby abandoned chemical plant to avoid the gunfire from above. This was exactly what Hammerdown wanted. The helicopters circled around the chemical plant and unleashed a barrage of powerful incendiary missiles, blowing the plant to kingdom come in hopes of dragging an incapacitated 682 out of the rubble afterwards. But when the smoke had cleared and only the rubble was left, 682 was nowhere to be seen. Even for the hardcore operatives of Hammerdown, this caused an anxiety spike. Had it tunneled into the ground, had it adapted to the attack by turning invisible or getting tiny to escape, it had done all these things before, or after all the deranged attempts at putting SCP-682 in the ground, had some light firebombing killed the monster? Whatever the case, they need to search. In case SCP-682 popped up somewhere else and started causing havoc, if it was still alive, which it probably was, they couldn't rest on their laurels until they'd found it again. Meanwhile, SCP-682 woke up. It felt groggy and irritated, its body resting against an unpleasant, soggy carpet. It licked the carpet. The moisture had the distinct flavor of human spinal fluid, which 682 had tasted many times before. The sickly yellow walls and incessant buzzing from the fluorescent lights up above were nauseating, and it gave 682 a nagging headache. This only made 682's default emotion, blistering rage and hatred, even worse. It began walking around exploring this strange, spatial, anomalous environment. Was this more of that frustrating Foundation trickery? 
Another one of those puerile cross-tests? The last thing 682 remembered was running at one of the walls in the chemical plant, a wall that, in hindsight, seemed darker than all the others. But rather than shattering through the brickwork, it was here now, in this strange, tacky lobby that never seemed to end. It was like a kaleidoscope of empty 1990s office kitsch. Endless, worthless yellow walls arranged like some labyrinthian, nonsensical maze, leading nowhere and devoid of all life as SCP-682 wandered through it. And of course, SCP-682 found it disgusting. It was only on level zero, and already 682 hated the backrooms just as much as it hated our dimension. Someone, or something, had to pay for the crime of inconveniencing it this way, and it would happily turn this whole dimension inside out just to find some beings to kill inside it. Yes, that would be great fun. SCP-682 began its frantic search for an exit, evolving an innate sonar ability and picking up speeds that would be impossible for human beings. This is the part where most people would go mad or die from hunger or thirst. SCP-682? Not so much. It could keep searching and searching and searching until the stars burned out in the sky. It would find its prey, somehow. And when it did, it would put them through hell. And as it turned out, this new universe rewarded 682's dog's stubbornness, because when it passed through a seemingly random hallway after hours of searching, it was in a different place entirely. This place looked like some huge abandoned warehouse complex with water shining off the ground. If 682 had more advanced knowledge of the back rooms, it would have known this was level 1. But the only number SCP-682 cared about was body count, and in that regard it would find level 1 to be a vast improvement. Two groups of humans had established bases in this level of the backrooms. The Major Explorer Group, a faction of professional backrooms travelers who maintained their base alpha on this level, and the Backrooms Non-Aligned Trade Group, a commercial group whose primary base is an economic hub on this very level, a fortified city-like area with a population of 412, which would, a few hours after 682's appearance, be a population of zero. But before all of that, it felt like grabbing a bite at the diner. Tom's Diner is a refuge for many people trapped in the back rooms, a casual eatery nestled into the cold warehouse environment of Level 1, where people could get a warm meal from Tom, a former cook who's been trapped in the back room for years. SCP-682 was eager to be part of this grand tradition, but the hard-to-destroy reptile decided to buck the trend a little by just devouring Tom himself. From there, it decided to launch its rage-fueled offensive against the various humanoid inhabitants of the level. Both the Major Explorer Group Base Alpha and the Backroom's Non-Aligned Trade Group Trade Keep were heavily fortified against the kind of entities these folks had gotten used to facing in the Backrooms, but they were completely unprepared for a creature of SCP-682's sheer power, intelligence, endurance, and ferocity. The SCP Foundation had been studying the creature for decades, with far more resources than either of these two backrooms-bound groups, and they still had a hard time keeping the beast consistently contained. Sadly for the great bastion of human hope in the backrooms, SCP-682 swept through both outposts in a matter of hours, killing everyone there without an ounce of remorse. The only person there it took its time with was the final human being left in the decimated remains of the Major Explorer's Group Base Alpha. It grabbed the man by the throat and squeezed, asking with its guttural, growling voice, You! Were you and your dead brethren allied with the SCP Foundation? Despite his fear, the explorer told 682 that he had never heard of the SCP Foundation, nor did he know what kind of entity 682 was. Hmm, then what is this place? Tell me, and I might give you a quick death. The explorer gave as good a response as he could. 682 was trapped in the back rooms, a multi-leveled interdimensional nightmare filled with dangerous creatures. That made 682 curious. Dangerous creatures? That could make an interesting challenge. 682 asked the explorer how it could access these other levels and find these creatures, and the explorer explained that through exploring these levels enough, anyone could no-clip into the next one. It really was that simple. With that, 682 knew all it needed to know and carelessly murdered the final human being of Level 1. It had killed so many humans over its long and twisted life, it was no different from breathing air now. An utterly perfunctory action. 
It was eager to discover these other creatures on the lower levels and teach them a new level of fear they'd never experienced. 682 stormed the halls until it achieved the next successful noclip into level 2, which manifested as a series of old dilapidated maintenance tunnels that seemed to stretch on for millions of miles. Wonderful. There were humans here too, apparently, but who cared about them? This was the first level to feature a smorgasbord of entities ripe for the killing. It sped through the tunnels, teeth and fangs born, eager to deal death with gleeful abandon. The first entities it encountered in the expansive tunnels of level 2 were a collection of beings known as crawlers, insect-like creatures infected with an extremely aggressive fungal growth. Just getting close to them could present an active risk to humans, not so much for a creature that could easily regenerate after being tossed into the sun. As the creatures tried to lunge, SCP-682 simply crushed and devoured them with little effort. They tasted a little stale, on account of the fungus, but the chewiness was pleasing. Hopefully there would be more challenging foes down in the tunnel than these mere insects, SCP-682 thought to itself, while journeying deeper into the endless network of tunnels. Soon enough, SCP-682 ventured into a section of the tunnel engulfed in total darkness. Its eyes quickly adjusted, developing immaculate night vision. That's when it spotted another creature sharing this little slice of darkness with it. A pair of floating, glowing eyes and almost cartoonish teeth, grinning like some maniacal Looney Tune. This is an entity known as a Smiler, and they're a terrifying threat to any humans venturing through the back rooms. SCP-682 wasn't impressed. It began a perfect adaptation for the situation. Its body began to glow, emitting incredible levels of both heat and light, carving through the darkness of the tunnel and causing the Smiler to emit a terrible, piercing shriek. The sheer heat of this new ability melted sections of the level 2 tunnels around SCP-682. When the light finally dimmed down to slightly more reasonable levels, where the Smiler once stood was instead a fizzling black scorch mark. Another creature had painfully bitten the dust, and SCP-682 was starting to have some fun. It took off further down into the tunnels, looking forward to finding its next victim. Sadly for SCP-682, it wouldn't get to kill the next set of victims. A group of four child facelings, spooky, faceless little girls who like to cut apart their typical human victims with small objects, were waiting a little further down the pipe. However, when they felt SCP-682 approaching, they almost sensed the power and cruelty of the beast coming towards them. Even being little monsters themselves, Game recognized Game, and they knew that they needed to get the hell out of there before the monster arrived. They climbed between the pipes on the tunnel walls and skittered off into hiding places deep in the dark. Lucky for them, SCP-682 passed them and just kept going. What would be the point in wasting time on these little morsels when there were apparently so many other creatures to massacre down here? Next, SCP-682 came across a truly pathetic creature, something that the mighty reptile honestly felt a little embarrassed even interacting with. It was a creature known as a clump, a strange bundle of living limbs that will move at great speeds and attack its usually human targets. It tried to do the same to SCP-682, maniacally flailing its many twisted limbs. 682 killed it in a single stomp and moved on, feeling its own psychological equivalent of pity, but not that much of it. Not long after Mercy killing the clump, SCP-682 came face to face with a series of hounds, mutant humanoids who travel on all fours, behaving in a wolf-like fashion. This would, of course, be the stuff of nightmares for your average human being, but would far more likely put a being like the hard-to-destroy reptile to sleep with sheer boredom. Humans acting like dogs? That makes them even more worthless. The creature thought, as it charged forwards and began tearing the group of hounds to shreds. Minutes later, it was splitting off into an adjoining tunnel, searching for more easy entertainment. But the deeper SCP-682 made its way into the bowels of level 2, the more it approached a truly horrifying realization. The creatures it was slaughtering here were even more boring than the ones the SCP Foundation ceaselessly threw at it back on its native reality, or at least the reality where they'd contained it. Back in that world, it had faced giant flaming demigods with swords hotter than the sun. It had faced some pale, shrieking monstrosity that didn't seem to die no matter what the reptile threw at it. There was the dark, gooey old man, the immortal warrior from the Black Coffin, and even the all-devouring bunny rabbit. Here it was killing the same wretched selection of beasts again and again, a truly pitiful offering. 
Was this really the best this world had to offer? Incidentally, the next creature it found was literally known as wretches by the human inhabitants of the backrooms. They were fleshy, zombie-like creatures that SCP-682 figured the Sarkists back home might enjoy. They couldn't believe that it was thinking fondly of that old place, while it carved the monsters to ribbons with its claws. It missed its old enemies, like Dr. Bright, Dr. Clef, and even that irritating yellow blob of snot. The more it tried to take its mind off the old world by killing its way through this ant farm of endless tunnels, the more it found itself waxing nostalgic. For example, there were the plague goblins, impish little creatures with masks like that of a plague doctor. 682 found itself thinking almost fondly about SCP-049, while it listlessly ate the tiny, mischievous creatures, like a depressed person binging an extra-large pack of chips. Even their tiny squeaks as they crunched between the reptile's terrible teeth gave it no joy. What a bleak turn of events this had all turned out to be. As it wandered through the infinite tunnels, killing creatures and even humans as it found them, SCP-682 made a quiet promise to itself. Somehow, some way, it would make its way back to the universe it so recently departed. It would leave the back rooms, no matter how many levels, a quiet, burning husk, and return to the world of fools and fiends it had taken for granted all this time. A visit to the back rooms had taught the hard to destroy reptile an all too human lesson. Sometimes you don't know what you have until it's gone. Sure, the SCP Foundation may have tried to kill it in a new, bizarre, and increasingly sadistic way every single day, but that variety was the spice of life. It would return home someday, it knew that much, but of course, a lot of creatures and people would need to die before then. But if that's what it took, well, so be it. SCP-682 licked its dagger-like fangs and kept crawling. If you want more of our take on the bizarre liminal hell that is The Backrooms, go check out our new channel, The Backrooms Explained, for more Backrooms content in our signature style. Now go check out SCP-682 Ways SCP Foundation Try to Kill Hard to Destroy Reptile, and SCP-682 vs. SCP Foundation Hard to Destroy Reptile Termination Attempts for more of everyone's favorite ornery reptile.